Hi, I'm Neil Feit of the SUNY Fredonia Department of Philosophy. In this video, I'm going to be talking about various logically significant uh, categories or concepts and relations. I'm going to be talking about um, attributes or properties that a single formula, well-formed formula, WFF, of logic might have. It might be a tautology, a contradiction, or a contingent statement. Okay, I'm going to be talking about relationships that hold between two statements, such as the relationship of logical equivalence or the relationship of logical contradictoriness. And I'm going to be talking about features that a group of statements or, or a, a collection of two or more statements might have. Uh, it might be logically consistent or um, inconsistent. Okay, um, I'm going to use this document a little bit. I'm also going to use the Power of Logic Web Tutor to illustrate a few of these concepts. A tautology is sometimes called a logical truth. Okay, It's a statement in logic that is true no matter what. It's always going to be true. Okay, um, Which means that if you construct a truth table for the statement and you look under its main operator, you will find a column that consists of all true values and no false values. Okay, A contradiction is in some sense the opposite of that. A contradiction cannot be true. In other words, it's always going to be false no matter what. So if you look under the main operator, it's going to have all false values. Okay, Every statement is either a tautology or a contradiction, or the remaining alternative is a contingent statement. So if it's not a tautology, it's going to have at least one false value. And if it's not a contradiction, it's going to have at least one true value somewhere, not necessarily in that order. Okay. So every statement must belong to one of these three categories. And no statement could belong to more than one of them. So this provides sort of a threefold division of the statements of, um, of classical logic or statement logic. We'll come back to those concepts in just a second, just quickly. Uh, we're also going to be talking about some relationships. So we're going to be talking about two concepts that hold between um, two statements, basically, a, a pair of well-formed formulas. So we're going to be talking about two statements being logically equivalent. Logically equivalent roughly means that they, they mean the same thing. So in statement logic, they're going to have identical columns under their main operators. The columns are always going to agree, agree in value. If one statement has a true value in a, a particular location, the other one's also going to be true. If one's false, the other one's also going to be false. Um, conversely, if formulas are logically contradictory, their columns are always going to disagree. If one of them's true, the other one's going to be false, and vice versa. And finally, we're going to be talking about a concept that can apply to a, a group or a collection of formulas, two or more formulas. And we're going to say that such a collection is logically consistent when there's at least one row in which all the statements are true. Okay, All the formulas are true. So a logically consistent group of statements is such that it can all be true together. There's a row of the truth table where all are true. There's an assignment to the um, atomic statements, the statement letters, which makes them all true. I'm going to do a few Power of Logic Web Tutor exercises to illustrate some of these concepts. I'm going to illustrate some of them um, using this document. I'm going to start with some 7.5 exercises. By the way, if you're one of my students or you're um, using the Power of Logic textbook, this video supplements uh, section 7.5. I'm going to choose um, section 7.5a here. And I'm going to go down to number 10. Okay, here we're supposed to do a truth val a truth table for the statement. Okay, um, it's very important. We're, this is not an argument. We're not dealing with an argument here. Validity or invalidity is not relevant. We are simply doing a truth table for this statement, and then we're going to decide which category it belongs to. Okay, so I'm going to do not R here. That's going to be the denial of R. Oops. Okay. In a regular truth table of this sort, we need to put a value under every operator. Sometimes these operators are called connectives. The tilde, the dot, the V, the arrow, the double arrow of statement logic. Okay. Um, in the abbreviated truth table method, we need to put a value under everything. Atomic letters, you know, capital letters in addition to, to um, 
connectives or, or operators. But here we're just putting values under operators. So um, R and not R is going to be false in column one, or row one rather. It's going to be false in row two, false in row three, false in row four. Okay. So by the way, um, R and not R, if, if that were the statement that's at issue, that's always going to be false. That's a contradiction. Okay, but that's not the statement we're concern, concerned with. We're concerned with if R and not R, then S. Okay, well, I know that R and not R is always false, so this conditional has a false antecedent in every row, so I know that the conditional is going to be true. Okay, um, so basically, I'm dealing here with a formula, if I've done this table correctly, which is all true. Okay, so. It tells me that I got the truth table right, correctly. And now it asks me to determine which um, category this statement belongs with, belongs to. And it's going to be a tautology because it's all true. Okay. This is an interesting fact about statement logic. Um, any statement of the form you know, P and not P then Q is going to be a logical truth. It's going to be a tautology in classical logic where we have um, two truth values, T and F. Um, some people think that that's a, a disadvantageous feature of this system. That's controversial. But just talking about categorizing the statement, it's going to be a tautology. Okay. Um, I'm going to do maybe just one more from 7.5a. Alrighty. Let me go down or up rather to number three. Okay. Sam doesn't shave himself if and only if he shaves himself or something like that. Okay. I have a um, tilde s, which is the not the main operator, so if s is false, tilde s if s is true, tilde s is false, and vice versa. In row one we're gonna have what? Um, false double arrow true, that's gonna be false. In row two we're gonna have um, true double arrow false, that's gonna be false. We could check the table. Truth table is correct. Okay. So here we have a statement. It needs only a two row truth table because there's only one atomic statement, one statement letter, S. Um, that's always false, so that's going to be a contradiction. Okay. Um, if I had another statement, which I'm not going to do, where it had uh, at least one true and at least one false under its main operator, we would have chosen that it's contingent. Okay. Um, I'm going to go. Oops, I'm going to go back to the main menu, or the menu for chapter 7, rather. I'm going to choose this um, exercise 7.B on logical equivalence. Okay. Um, it is interesting here that uh, the directions or the instructions say to use truth tables to prove that the following statements are tautologies. Okay. Um, basically, we are proving here that each pair of statements, each pair of smaller statements on either side of the double arrows here are logically equivalent statements. And I'll say more about that as I do just one exercise here. I'm going to go down to number seven. All right. Um, if you look at this statement, it says, well, let's just look at the uh, two sides of the biconditional. F if and only if G. And the right-hand side says f and g, in other words, f and g are both true, or not f and not g, in other words, or they're both false. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to prove that f if and only if g, f double arrow g, is logically equivalent to the statement that f and g are both true, or they're both false. Okay, which if you think about the truth table for the biconditional, will strike you as correct. Okay. Again, what I want to do here is I want to fill in the values, and I have my capitals lock, my caps lock button up, um, key down because it wants um, uppercase T's and F's here for the truth values. So here's the truth table for the biconditional. That's trivial, TFFT. Okay. So the left statement is pretty easy. 
Okay, here I want to work up to that V, which is the major operator, or the main operator, rather. So this is going to be T, F, 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 that's just a conjunction. Okay, again, a regular truth table, I need a, a value under every connective or operator. So I need a value under this tilde. It's going to be the negation of F, which is going to be F, F, T, T, okay, and I need um, a value under the tilde of the G, so it's going to be F, T, oops, F, T, okay. Now I need a value for this dot, um, F dot F is F, F dot T is also F, hitting delete, um, T dot F is F, and t dot t is t. Okay. Now, this v is the main operator of the the second statement that we want to test here, basically. So, um, in row one, I have a. I'm looking at the two dots here, the two dot values, and I'm I'm disjoining them. Okay. Um, t or f in row one is going to be t. Um, F or F is going to be F in row two. F or F is going to be F in row, oops, excuse me, F in row three. And F or T is going to be um, T in row four. Okay. Now, before I finish this off, oops, look at the column there and the column there. Okay, they are identical. TFFT. So basically, this truth table already establishes that the statement on the left side of this double arrow is logically equivalent to the statement on the right side of that double arrow. Okay. But the way the web tutor works here is it exploits a fact. If two statements are logically equivalent, then the result of putting a double arrow between them is going to be a tautology. We have Again, we're, I'm looking at um, this operator here, and I'm looking at this operator here, the main operators of the statements, and I am um, using the double arrow between them. Okay, that's going to be a tautology. So, check the truth table. The truth table is correct, and then we have shown that these two statements are logically equivalent because the result of putting a um, double arrow between them is a tautology. So in other words, the, to say that they're logically equivalent is to say that their columns always agree in va value, and if their columns always agree in value, then the value of the biconditional, the double arrow bet between them, is going to be always t. It's going to be a tautology. So there's a, actually a relationship between the concept of a tautology and the concept of logical equivalence. If you've got two statements that are logically equivalent to one another, and you make a bigger statement out of them with a double arrow in between, the double arrow is going to be a tautology. The result of combining them into a, a biconditional is going to be a tautology. Okay, so I am now going to go back to my um, Word document here, and we talked about tautologies, we talked about logical equivalence. Okay, um, yeah, maybe we'll do one more, actually, come to think of it, from... Uh, I guess we don't, we don't have an exercise on uh, contradictoriness. Okay. Um, if I had statements like, oh, I don't know, T... F, T, T, and then I had the opposite of T, F, and I had the opposite of F, T, and then I had the opposite of T, F, and I had the opposite of T, F, okay? If two statements happen to have these columns underneath them, well, these columns always disagree in value. They're never the same, so those would be logically contradictory. Okay, basically they would, in, in essence, be logical negations of one another. Okay. Um, 
I'm just going to talk for a moment about the concept of of a logically consistent group of two or more statements, okay? So consider, for example, these three statements that I have up here. If P then Q, if Q then P, and not P, okay? Um, if you look at the truth table, kind of a joint truth table for these three statements, okay, you could look at row one, and the third statement here, P, is false in, in row one. There's a couple of false statements in row two. Um, the statement in the middle here is false in row three. But if you look at row four, all statements are true. Okay, and as a result, this group of three statements is a logically consistent group of statements. Okay, um, there's an assignment of values to the atomics. In this case, it's false and false. There's an assignment of values to the atomics. In other words, there's a row of the truth table where all of them are true together, and that is sufficient and necessary for them being a consistent, a logically consistent group of statements. Okay, um, if we if we take a look by contrast at this group of statements, and by the way, we're not dealing with an argument here. We're, we're these. It's just three statements. We're not. We don't have premises and a conclusion here. We just have three statements, and we're doing a joint truth table for those statements. Um, if you look at these three statements. Um, in this row, they're not all true. In this row, they're not all true. In this row, row three, they're not all true. Nor are they all true in this row. Okay, so here there's no row where all statements are true, and that is necessary and sufficient for them being inconsistent. There's no row where they're all true. Okay, so there's a little bit of a simple demonstration of the concept of logical consistency and its deny a logical inconsistency. Okay, I'm just going to finish up real quick. Okay, here's that concept that I was kind of fumbling over a few minutes ago, logical contradictoriness. Logical contradictoriness is a relationship between two statements. And in a strong sense, it's actually, it's, it's actually the, rela the relation of um, negation. I mean, if I have P, it's either going to be true or false, sorry for my pseudo handwriting here, and if I have not P, it's going to be false or true, okay, and of course they they never agree. So a statement and its negation are going to be logically contradictory, and basically any logic, logically contradictory pair of statements are going to be negations of one another, even if they don't on the surface look like they have, you know, something and then tilde something, even if they really don't look like P and not P kind of statements. So here's a couple of statements that happen to be logically contradictory. Okay, If you look at um, row one, main operators, remember we're looking at main operators, those disagree, those disagree, those disagree, and those disagree. So in other words, the values are never the same, and hence this is a logically contradictory pair of statements. Okay, um, every logically contradictory pair of statements is going to be inconsistent. No, notice that there's no row in which both of these statements are true. Okay, again we're we're looking at their oops, we're looking at their main operators. Okay, but we're we're testing out rows to see if they're true or false. Okay, so every every logically contradictory pair of statements is going to be an inconsistent group of statements. But the the converse of that um, doesn't always hold. Just because um, a group of two or more statements let let's just keep it with two. Just because a group of two statements is inconsistent, just because that there there's no row in which all of them are true, it doesn't follow that their values are never the same. And you could think about that, and maybe I'll I'll leave that I'll leave you with that as a kind of um, exercise to think about. So anyway, just to sum up, we have talked about um, logical categories that single statements might fall into. They might be tautologies, contradictions, or contingent statements. We've talked about logical relationships that might hold between two formulas or statements. Two statements might be equivalent or not equivalent. Um, we've talked about logically contradictory statements. Two, two statements might be logically contradictory or not. And we've talked about a feature that groups of statements or, or a group of two or more statements might have. It might be inconsistent, logically inconsistent, or, or consistent. So I hope this video was helpful. And um, 
you might think about that last problem that I gave you.